Banahia or the Yidria, also known as the Directress Icon, is historically understood to be the first icon of the Church. It was painted, according to the sacred tradition of our Church, in Jerusalem by St. Luke the Evangelist. According to the Synoxidion, the Holy Evangelist created the icon of the Most Holy Theotokos while she was still alive, and she accepted it with great joy, and blessed it, saying, May the grace of he who was born from me be with this icon. The origins of this icon are also witnessed to by the Megalinarion of the Paraclesis to the Most Holy Theotokos, where it is chanted, Speechless be the lips of impious men who refuse to reverence your august icon, which is called the Mother of God the Directress, and was painted by the divine apostle Luke the Evangelist. Saint Luke sent the portrait of the Mother of God to Antioch, to the most excellent Theophilus, with the text of his gospel, and towards the middle of the 5th century this icon was transferred to Constantinople. During the reign of Theodosius II, the Empress and Saint Evokia, commemorated on August 13th, went to Jerusalem in 438 and lived there after she was banished from 444 to 460. Saint Evokia sent the icon as a gift to Theodosius' sister, Saint Bulgeria, commemorated on February 17th. The icon was placed under St. Pulcheria's supervision in the holy monastery of Banahia or the Yidria in Constantinople, of which she was the founder. The icon performed countless miracles, such as the rescue of Constantinople in 717 AD from the Arabs and the Slavs. Banahia or the Yidria was the image that the emperors and the people carried around the walls of Constantinople in difficult times to encourage the defenders of the city. In the icon of the Triumph of Orthodoxy, it is the icon of Panahia or the Yitria that is being held in the procession led by Saints Theodora and Saint Methodios as ecumenical patriarch. This icon led the restoration of icons throughout the Byzantine Empire. Each Tuesday, from as early as the 5th century all the way up to the fall of Constantinople and the destruction of Banahia or the Yidria in 1453, a miracle took place at the procession of this icon. A Spanish traveller named Pedro Tefer recounts his experience of the miracle when he visited Constantinople in 1438. I went to the church of St. Mary, where the body of Constantine is buried. In this church is an icon of Our Lady the Virgin, made by St. Luke, and on the other side is our Lord crucified. It is painted on stone, and with the frame and stand it weighs, they say, several hundred weight. So heavy is it, as a whole, that six men cannot lift it. Every Tuesday some twenty men come there, clad in long red linen draperies which cover the head like a stalking dress. These men come of special lineage, and by them alone can that office be filled. There is a great procession, and the men who are so clad go one by one up to the picture, and he whom it is pleased with takes it up as easily as if it weighed only an ounce. The bearer then places it on his shoulder, and they go singing out of the church to a great square, where he who carries the picture walks with it from one end to the other, and fifty times round the square. By fixing one's eyes upon the picture, it appears to be raised high above the ground and completely transfigured. When it is set down again, another comes and takes it up and puts it likewise on his shoulder, and then another, and in that same manner, some four or five of them pass the day. There is a market in the square on that day, and a great crowd assembles, and the clergy take cotton wool and touch the picture and distribute it among the people who are there, and then, still in procession, they take it back to its place. While I was at Constantinople, I did not miss a single day when this picture was exhibited, since it is certainly a great marvel. A copy of this miraculous icon of the Theotokos is today in the Holy Xenophondos Monastery on Mount Athos. 
Until 1730, it was in the holy monastery of Vatopedi, but that year it mysteriously disappeared from there behind closed doors. The fathers of Vatopedi searched everywhere in the monastery, without finding the icon anywhere. It was later heard that it was at Xenofondos, so the fathers of Vatopedi sent a group of fathers to Xenofondos. How did it get here, they asked. It was found in the church, but we do not know how it got here and where it came from, they answered. All understood then that it appeared to be a miracle. However, the monks of Xenofondos said to the monks of Vatopedi, It is yours to take. And so they took it and returned it to its place at Vatopedi. There they took protective measures and locked the doors, so as not to lose her again. But again the icon left and went back to the holy monastery of Xenofondos. That's where the fathers of Vatopedi found her. They understood that the mother of God wanted her icon to stay there. That's why they didn't take her back. They made prostrations and chanted various hymns and supplications in front of the holy icon and decided to regularly send wax and oil for the icon to Xenofondos. Vladimir Losky, commenting on the icon of Panahia or the Yitria in the book The Meaning of Icons, wrote the following description. The Syrian prototypes of the Odiyitria, already numerous in the 6th century, show us the mother of God upright, holding the infant in swaddling clothes, half lying on her left arm. These images were to be transformed by the Byzantine conception. On the icons of the Odiyitria created at Byzantium, the Christ child always appears seated erect on his mother's left arm. The infant is no longer a suckling. He is the type of the Christ Emmanuel, the infant pre-eternal God, full of wisdom despite his tender years. Clothed in a glorious robe woven of gold, the Christ Emmanuel has in his left hand a scroll, whilst with his right hand he blesses, turning full face and looking straight before him. The Mother of God, upright, straight and majestic, has no expression of intimacy towards her son. She looks at the spectator or rather her look is directed to the side, above the head of the Emmanuel. The right hand of the Odiyitria, raised towards the chest, could be expressing a gesture of prayer, but rather it is a gesture of presentation. The Theotokos shows to men the Son of God who, by her, has come into the world. Or again, it is the attitude of the Sovereign who presents to her son the people of the faithful, to which the Christ Emmanuel responds with a broad majestic gesture of benediction. As the original icon of Banahia or the Yitria was so historic, many icons have been made with a similar style and have come to work many miracles and become well known in their own right. All have similar features to the Odi Yitria as described earlier. Banahia holds Christ and outstretches her right hand towards her son. In this way, she leads and directs the faithful towards him. We see the Odiyitria style present in many of the most well-known Orthodox icons, each of which could probably warrant an episode of their own. Each of these icons have slight variations, as well as their own traditions and miracles. One such icon is Banahya Mitirdiotisa, also known as Our Lady of Myrtles, the pride and glory of Githira. This icon was found in a myrtle bush by a shepherd who had a vision, and he took this icon home. When he woke up, he found that the icon was gone. When he saw that the icon had returned to the myrtle bush, he took it back to his home, but it again returned to the bush. The shepherd then built a chapel there, which is now the monastery of Banahya Mitiriotisa. Through this icon, Banahya has healed paralytics and saved the fortress of Githira and these miracles and the myrtles now feature on many icons. This icon differs from the normal or the Yitria, as the faces of Christ and Panahia are far darker than normal, and the myrtles often appear at the base of the icon or as a key feature in the background. Another icon in this style is Panahia Trigerusa, the mother of God of the three hands. This is the icon before which St. John of Damascus prayed to receive healing after the Muslim Caliph cut off his hand. After a vision, St. John awoke to find his hand restored, and added a silver hand to the icon. To thank the Theotokos, St. John wrote the following hymn. All of creation rejoices in you, O full of grace. Episi hieri gecharitomeni basaiktisis. This icon is now often painted with a third hand pointing towards Christ to commemorate this miracle. 
One of the miraculous icons of the holy mountain is an ancient wall painting of Banahia Horue Picos, Banahia Quick to Hear. It is located at the Hiereu Monastery. In 1664, the monk Nilos, who used to pass regularly in front of the icon holding in his hand a lighted torch which he needed for his duties in the refectory, he heard a voice telling him, Do not come past here with a torch, leaving smoke on my icon. Nilos did not pay much attention to the voice, but it was soon heard again. Then a punishment was given to the monk, and he became blind. The brethren began to show great reverence in passing before the icon, and hung a perpetual lamp before it, and burnt incense before the icon every day. The blind Nilos spent all his time in front of the icon, imploring the Theodokos to forgive and heal him, and his prayer was granted when, for the third time, a voice was heard from the icon. The Theotokos told Nilos that his supplication had been heard. He was forgiven and he received his sight as before. The Theotokos also said, Let the monks flee to me for their every need, and I will quickly hear them and all Orthodox Christians who flee to me with reverence, for I am called quick to hear. This icon is, for all intents and purposes, almost identical to the Odhiyitriya icon. However, through this icon, Banahya is telling us about how she responds speedily to the prayers of the faithful. One common theme for all of these icons are that they have all led to healing, and have all pointed the way through miracles and other events to Banahya. But what does it mean that we call these icons or the Hydria? That word has multiple meanings in Greek, but the primary meaning is that of a guide. The aim of Banahia as directress and guide is to lead us away from this fallen world and towards the path of salvation. That is why she is pointing at Christ in each of these other Yitria icons. Through the miracles worked through her icons and the many other miracles that Banahia works every day, she leads us to Christ. These range from the extraordinary, such as curing cancer or paralysis, to things that appear ordinary but are still miraculous, such as turning a person's heart towards Christ. It is not just the miracles that lead people to Christ. Looking at the beauty of her icons and the deep love for Christ they can reflect can do this as well. Additionally, the Theotokos' way of life, and practically everything about her, also achieves this. That should get every faithful Orthodox Christian thinking to themselves. What do I do to lead people to Christ? Does my behaviour do this? Can people see Christ in the way that I live and the way that I speak? Do I actually lead people away from Christ? When there are opportunities to bring others closer to Christ, do I take them? Or do I leave them to slip away? Do I even hesitate to bring myself closer to Christ? The answer to these questions is that we need to let go of our own wills and humbly allow ourselves to be led closer to Christ. Through following the example of Banahia's life, and through coming closer to the church, we bring ourselves under the protection of the Theotokos, who will guide and lead us to life everlasting, and true union with her Son and our God. This is not an easy road, as there are many twists and turns, but Banahia as Directress and Odhiyitriya will always lead us back to the correct path and to the way of salvation. That concludes this episode of the Icons of Banahia. In the next episode, we will be exploring the lesser known but no less significant icon of Banahia Vlachernitisa and the style of icon depicting the Theotokos praying.